Recently, we have talked about different types of display, like the LCD display that comes with the I2C module, the OLED display, which is this one that we can use for some projects. Also, we have talked about this simple uh, seven segment display. In today's project, we will talk about another one, which is a four digit display that comes with a module that is called TM1637, and it allows you to control it using few pins, which are the clock and the data. Then you can display all kinds of information, like a number. In this video, we're going to display the temperature in Celsius. Basically, we are going to install a library that allows you to use some functions and display numbers, letters, or any shape you want. And without any further ado, let's dive right in. First of all, we need to understand how to hook up this to the Arduino board. As you can see, we have four pins, the clock, the data, then we have VCC and GND to power up the module. You could follow this diagram. I'm gonna connect the clock to digital pin number two, the data to the pin number three, the GND goes to the GND, and the VCC to the five volt pin. For that, I'm gonna use these uh, four male to female jumper wires. I'm not going to add the temperature sensor. Let's understand how the sensor works. First of all, we have to install a library that allows you to use it very easily by going to the library manager and search for the name TM1637. Make sure to get this one by Avishai, I guess. And it is the version 1.2. Then you could open up an example to understand it using file, examples, and all the way down, we have TM1637 test. On top, you have to include the library TM1637 display. Then we have few variables for the pins. If you have used different ones, make sure to change them from here. And the rest of the code is testing the display by showing different numbers or shapes. Let's give it a try by hitting upload. Of course, you have to select the board that you are using. I have an Arduino Nano that is connected to the COM number eight. And once it's done, you will see a few numbers that are displayed with different ways. That means your sensor is working just fine. We can use it to show custom letters like these and adjust its brightness. Now let's try to understand it. For example, we have this array that allows you to display the letters like done. If you don't know, each segment has a letter like A, B, C, D, E, F, and G in the middle. If you want to display the number one, we can activate the segments B and C. You could also use other functions like set the brightness, which takes a value between zero and seven. Seven is the maximum. In this code, they have passed the number in hexadecimal, but I think using numbers is much easier. Zero is the lowest and seven is the highest. Next, we have the function display.setSegments that takes in the uh, name of the array, like this segment done. To display it. The function clear clears the display. In our project we are going to use display.showNumberDecimal that takes few parameters like the number that you want to display, for example the temperature in Celsius. Next we have a boolean. If you set it to false it's gonna leave the other uh, segments as they are, but if you change it to true you will see the number zeros next to it. And finally you could add few other parameters like the size of the number, here we have two, and the position. If you change it to two, we will have two empty uh, values. Now let's create our own sketch, and we'll use the DHT sensor. I've created a video about it, but it's really easy to use. We have three pins. The VCC goes to the five volt pin, or the 3.3 volts. The GND to the GND to power it up. And finally, we use the data pin, or signal, to read the temperature and the humidity from this sensor that is called DHT11 but if you have the other version which is DHT22 you could use it with the same way let's hook it up to the breadboard and connect the GND to the GND the middle one is labeled data or signal needs to be connected to one of the pins like the pin number four and finally the VCC I'm gonna hook it up to the five volt pin because I can't reach the 3.3 volts then we can move on to the code to display the temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Before that, you have to search for the library DHT sensor library, and it is this one by Adafruit. We've already installed it in previous videos, which allows you to get the temperature and the humidity from the DHT11 or the DHT22 sensor. Then let's go on top and include the libraries that we need. 
using include. The first one is the uh, DHT sensor library. Then I would add the display library, which is called tm1637display.h because it's a library. Next, we will add our objects that we're going to use, like the DHT object. I'm going to call it DHT. And in these parentheses, we pass in two parameters. The first one is the pen. In my case, I have connected to the pen number four. Then the type of the DHT sensor, which is DHT11. Next, we add the display object. This is the type, and we can call it display. We have to pass in few parameters, which are the clock pin number two, and the data pin number three. I recommend you to add few variables for these parameters to make it a little bit dynamic, but let's stick with that for now. Then under the setup function, let's enable the DHT sensor using dht.begin and set the brightness of the display by adding the function display.setBrightness. I'm going to use 3, which is a medium brightness. Next, we have to add a little bit of delay, because this sensor needs a little bit of time to get the right value of the temperature and the humidity. I think 2 seconds is fine. Then under the loop, which is called over and over again, we're going to read the temperature and put it inside a variable of type int and call it temp. As I said, you could read the humidity with the same way, but let's stick with that and use dht dot read temperature. Optionally, you could add a boolean. If you set it to true, you will get the temperature in Fahrenheit, but I'm going to use the Celsius unit. After that, we can display it using display dot and the name of the function, like show number decimal. Make sure that the first word starts with a lowercase and the other ones with an uppercase like number and des. In programming, it is called the camel case notation. I'm going to pass in the value of the temperature that is stored inside the temp variable. I don't want to add zeros for the other digits by passing false. Also, I want to set the length, which is 2, and the position, 0, because I want to start from the left side, not the right one, so that we can add the unit next to it, Celsius. To make sure that the sensor works properly, make sure to add a delay, like 2 seconds, and hit upload after selecting the board and the port of the USB cable. I haven't connected the sensor properly, so I need to move it a little bit to the left side. And there you go, we have the temperature, it's about 30 Celsius. We have the previous letters, because we need to make sure to clear the display, using another function on top, which is display.clear. Before I finish this video, I want to improve the project by adding the unit. If we get back to the first sketch that we have talked about at the beginning of the video, to display custom characters, you can set the segment names. With the same way, we can create our custom characters. I have created this array. The name is Celsius, which creates a circle like this one, and the letter C. For the small circle, you have to activate the segments A, B, F, and G. Then we have these to display the character C. The digits are separated with a comma, but the segments are separated with this character. Then let's go under the loop function and use display. And the function that is used to display it is called set segments that takes in the name of the variable or the array Celsius. Next, I will set the size. We have two characters and the position two so that we can see it on the right side at this position. You see, it's really simple to create projects like this using these libraries. Now let's give it a try. We are missing a semicolon. And let's try it again. I think that's pretty much it, guys, for this video. I hope you like it. If you have any question or comments about this project, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next one.